Welcome once again to Uregina 120. Uh, I'm Jeff Cliff, and this is a uh, series of 120 videos on things that I have learned in the, or during the course of my computer science degree at the University of Regina. Um, these are short little videos, and this one will hopefully be shorter than some of the previous ones. The idea here is dimensional analysis, uh, something that you'll pick up probably in physics. Uh, but there's really no reason why you couldn't have, I guess, encountered it earlier or uh, learned about it in some other class, because it does actually kind of simplify uh, doing math, doing word problems, and makes things more approachable, which is, of course, what we're, we want to do. So, um, this is something that you'll do in physics, uh, and it can help in other areas. And so, we'll be kind of trying to get into that. Uh, it is used to double check uh, when you're making a mistake or when you're not making a mistake. So you should always be looking for ways to uh, verify, what, you know, if you're taking a final exam or a midterm or something, or even just an, a regular assignment, or even out in the real world, and you're doing something, you should always look for ways to double check and to verify what you're doing. Uh, you can save yourself a lot of hassle by employing them and this is an example of that. Uh, this is one way uh, also to get into type theory. Uh, I'm not going to kind of explain the details, but I think at least that if you pull hard enough on this idea, uh, that type theory eventually falls out. Uh, of course, that is an advanced computer science topic, and we'll kind of leave that aside from that point. Um, so what is the idea here? The idea is to drop the numbers out of a, an equation or an expression uh, and let the units uh, or the, the magnitude of uh, the, the kinds of things that the numbers represent uh, be the only thing that you deal with. So for example, our f equals ma kind of example equation uh, the units on each side of this equation should be the same. So if you have m is mass, the SI unit for mass is kilograms, or in this case grams, and acceleration is meters over second squared. If you didn't know the units for force, you would then be able to determine that they would have to be grams or kilograms times meters per second squared. Uh, of course, we do know that. Um, the unit Newton uh, is just a kilogram times meters per second squared. Uh, so given this is you know, kilogram or gram doesn't really matter in this case, um, plugs into here, and it works. So we know that this, these two equations balance, so we can at least know that we're looking at the right kind of thing. Just to use a more complicated example, I pulled a random book from the bookshelf from a class I've never even taken, this thermodynamics textbook. It's actually quite an involved textbook, very interesting looking. That would be a sixth edition thermodynamics and engineering approach by uh, Jonas uh, Sangel or Jangel and Michael A. Bowles, uh, for those of you who want to look it up. Uh, but it's an extremely interesting book, but it has this equation in it um, uh, relating the lines uh, that are created during uh, some when something crosses the sound barrier in a fluid. Um, doesn't really matter all that much. What does matter is that the units have to balance on both sides. So we're going to see if that's actually true. So this is going to be an equation relating the pressure divided by the gas constant, I think that's a gas constant R, uh, times the temperature, uh, times the Mach number, times the speed of sound in the medium, all squared. And 
that's going to be equal to the velocity squared times rho, or the density. Let's see if that's true. Rho is grams or kilograms over meter cubed. This V uh, is just meters a second, I think. Turns out to not actually matter all that much. Pressure is in pascals. Temperature, of course, is in Kelvin. Uh, R uh, is a little bit complicated. Uh, it's pascals times meters cubed over uh, grams or kilograms Kelvin. And then this MAC, uh, it turns out that the, the Mach number is actually just the velocity over C. So we can do a little bit of simplification there times C squared. So from there we can simplify this by taking the C completely out of the equation. Removing Pascal from both sides. Uh, flipping this grams uh, per or times Kelvin to the top. So good. Of course, we've got a Kelvin on top and on bottom here, so we can remove that. And this V squared here is just meters a second squared, which is also on this side, so we can remove that. And what are we left with? Grams, or kilograms, over meters cubed on one side, grams over meter cubed on the other. So, just as an example, we had this complicated looking equation. We don't even know if it's true or not. Uh, although it came from a textbook, so that's kind of a, a reliable source. Um, but regardless of whether or not you believe it, you at least know this much, that the, the units involved, uh, given this single substitution here, which is entirely defined by this number, the Mach number, um, it is because the units balance, it's reasonable to at least look a little bit deeper before we were to, say, empirically verify it, or to find out what the numbers actually pl plug out to be. If you have the temperature, the pressure, the Mach number, and the speed of sound in the medium, and you know the, 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 the speed or the volume, whichever it is, it doesn't really matter, uh, you can find out the density. So in this particular context for the particular equation given. So I again, it's, it's kind of a, a first step thing to do uh, when you get an equation, you don't fully understand it, or you're not really sure uh, if it's true, or you're not really sure if you derived it correctly, uh, it's, it's a way to double check your work if you're, you've done something on the exam. You know, check the units. It's, it's good to do. It's easy. It's easy to understand. You can, you can, you know, hopefully get what I've done here. And notice that there was no numbers involved. So all the trouble of dealing with numbers and having to keep numbers straight just isn't an issue. You can deal with the numbers later. You can deal with the numbers if the units balance. If the units don't balance, then at least look for why the units don't balance. This particular, or this particular example, the units were a little hard to find. Uh, I wasn't looking for this Pascal uh, unit, so I wasn't really sure that it was there. But when I found it, again, the units balance, so I know that I was on the right path and that this equation at least is plausible. So. Hopefully that's a useful thing to you, um, you know, for double checking and uh, simplifying your life. Uh, if you have any questions or if you'd like me to do another example, feel free to make a, a comment. Uh, you know, I, I, these comment or these videos are for your benefit, so uh, you know, get something out of it. So again, uh, this is Jeff Cliff, and uh, hopefully you've enjoyed.